are still missing uh, one thing, <coughs> uh, which is long wave radiation. And this is a slide actually, a slide down here in this presentation, but was new in the previous one, because when the sun, the radiation goes to, obviously goes to plants, and it's used for photosynthesis, or other chemical reaction. Uh, we said before that the Earth is a gray body. Now we say actually the atmosphere is a gray body, but also Earth <coughs> is a gray body. And the uh, Earth has its own temperature. So uh, the temperature is uh, in the midst of radiation. <coughs> this is an answer out of the future. So go, uh, going back to a notion that maybe you know, maybe not, and uh, is uh, the equation of uh, uh, the plant laws for gray bodies and the Stefan Boltzmann equation for gray body, bodies, also for ev every for every bo body, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what uh, is quite uh, maybe complicated. Uh, it, the first one gives the how much is the solar radiation incoming in each uh, each wavelength lambda, uh, given that the body has temperature T in Kelvin degrees. As you see, uh, the law uh, the mark, the Planck laws goes to lambda to the minus five, which is the wavelength of the minus five. H is the Planck constant, C is the velocity of light, pi is pi, and uh, K is called, K, K that appears in the, in, the, in, the, in the exponential formula is the uh, uh, Boltzmann con constant. So uh, from this law, we know that uh, given the temperature, given what this constant that, that, that I told you, uh, how a body behaves as a black body. If epsilon is not equal to one, it is different to one, it, uh, uh, it says that uh, the thing is a gray body. And uh, uh, if we integrate uh, the Planck's law all over the lambdas, what we obtain is the Stefan Boltzmann law. So the second one, the, the latter, is the integration of the first one all over the lambdas. But for, uh, for what? Uh, obviously, the second one assumes that all the emissivity are equal to one. Or otherwise, we, if they are different, uh, different from one, <coughs> we, we need to have a law that describe the function epsilon lambda with lambdas when we do integration. The the, the Stefan Boltzmann law is, is obtained if lambda is constant through the is obtained in this way in any case. Uh, from uh, an operational point of view, we can define e epsilon lambda like uh, uh, the uh, the answer of the real body uh, uh, with respect to the black body, where the epsilon is equal to one. Um, so, uh, uh, from a Kirchhoff law, we know also that. Uh, uh, Body is a uh, which is a good absorber, uh, which is a good radiator, is also a good absorber. Meaning that phrase means that uh, the, uh, the the alpha that we had in the previous treatment of the material of, the, of this matter is equal to epsilon, and so uh, rho uh, uh, the transmissivity and epsilon makes. Uh, all, all the sun makes one. So, what is the uh, the wavelength answer to um, uh, to a, a body of a certain temperature? 
you see the black body is the one, the corpus is like, uh, um, it is defined for, uh, for lambdas uh, larger than the posi positive lambdas, obviously is a positive function, but it looks like it is a distribution function. Yeah. And um, is a unimodal, when you have a gray body, uh, a, a gray body actually in the traditional sense is one that has still epsilon constant but less than one <coughs> uh, and maintain more or less the shape of the, of the original uh, curves, which is the distribution that we, the Planck distribution. Um, the right name for the Earth and the, and the surface of Earth and, and the uh, atmosphere is actually a selective uh, a selective radiator, meaning that the epsilon is a function of lambda. This is more or less what we already saw before. The, I, the thing is, uh, is not uh, uh, much uh, much visible though, uh, since this ye yellow that appears on, on the slide. However, um, <coughs> However, it, uh, uh, it says uh, what uh, the, it shows the value of absorptions of a, of a, of a light at different temperature. Uh, you have, what is the temperature of the Earth? Temperature of the Earth on average is uh, 288 Kelvin. So if we put 288 Kelvin <coughs> in the formulas that we had before, we have the distribution of the radiation that the uh, Earth is emitting, and this is in the range, of, mostly in the range of infrared radiation. So infrared radiation is here, and so we see the carbon dioxide in, in the in the atmosphere capture the radiation back from the Earth. Also, water uh, vapor capture, capture back, uh, back the, uh, the radiation from the Earth it, it itself. So what happens is uh, uh, solar, direct solar radiation in the part of the spectrum covered mainly by the sun, which has a surface of uh, 6,000 Kelvin, is passing through the atmosphere. It, um, the, the, the surface, Worms, and then uh, emits uh, other radiation in a different, anyway, wavelengths. And this, but at this wavelength, uh, the atmosphere is not transparent; it's opaque, and this causes what is called, uh, probably and properly, the uh, <coughs> effect. And properly, because in a greenhouse, in a greenhouse. <coughs> that is also suppression of uh, convection. And so the heating of the greenhouse is mostly due to the suppression of convection, not, not just on an effect like this one. Translated into, into a picture, the, what the, the behavior <coughs> of the Earth and the behavior of the sun is represented by this one. The yellow is the sun, the red is the, uh, the Earth. And uh, uh, this is covered by a huge factor, obviously, because this is much smaller than the one million times smaller with respect to the sun. So most of the radiation comes from the sun. And uh, you see here in wavelengths, uh, the half of the sun is uh, more or less peaked around 0.5, 0.6. Uh, uh, micro uh, micrometers. Instead, the Earth is much larger here. Is reflecting the right here. Uh, so this is the reason why we we talk uh, at least in hydrology uh, in uh, short wave and long wave radiation uh, because they are pretty distinct. Uh, they have pretty distinct distribution, and we we be, uh, we talk as well the Actually, the radiation have two bands, the long wave and the short waves. But 
keeping in mind these things, the reason is, is clear. So atmosphere is not uh, transpar uh, transparent, um, uh, transparent to the warming from below, and uh, so meaning the, uh, that uh, uh, the, the atmosphere is uh, warmer from below and uh, is like a more like it's not warmer from the top. It's more like a, 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 a boiling a, a, a boiling device for doing pasta. <laughs> which is heated from from below. This is this is actually how the temperature goes. The temperature is higher at the bottom. Then we have for whatever the temperature means at a large height we have uh, we have variation, but we are anyway going out uh, in the space. This type of uh, distribution of temperature. But you see what is, is important to you. For us in the troposphere, the largest temperature is on, on bottom, and then the temperature is decreasing for the thermodynamics effect that everybody knows that when the parcel of air is going up, it's decreasing its pressure and is uh, expanding and losing, and losing internal energy. In absence of this effect, uh, the temperature of Earth will be uh, below zero, minus 17 degrees. I wouldn't say that minus 17 degrees light is impossible, but uh, will be kind of different of the light that we know right now. <coughs> so greenhouse effect uh, is not uh, that all negative. It's positive for if maintained in a uh, certain range. So uh, the temperature, the, 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 uh, the average temperature is about uh, 15 <coughs> degrees or uh, 7 to 15 degrees. What happens? Uh, wha uh, what uh, from the the heating? Uh, what happens for the heating is a, a lot of thing. We have a, 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 the a part of the budget. Anyway, the, the radiation goes back, partially, partially the radiative transfer happens, so we have the, um, the sum of this, uh, of this energy uh, goes anyway directly back to the space. If the Earth is in balance, we go energy coming in and the same amount of energy on average going out. Uh, we say that uh, uh, the average coming in is around 1.4 uh, kilowatts for, for square meter. So the same amount in the former or the other has to go out if the, the Earth is in balance. All of, all, all of us knows that uh, uh, we are in climate change moment, so um, you are asking maybe how much is the effect of climate change, uh, climate change on this is a very small fraction, very small fraction, few, per, few percent, less than one percent. The other thing that is clarifying these figures is that uh, anyway, because the uh, long wave radiation is captu captured back by, by the atmosphere, there are a lot of, uh, of things going on in the atmosphere. The atmosphere is accumulating heating, an engine is going on, thermodynamic engine of the atmosphere, which is co uh, causing precipitations. And so the, the other part of the <coughs> of the uh, energy is uh, actually transferred back, back through a long series of processes which include all that we know about the, the precipitation dynamics in the atmospheres and that all the atmosphere motion around the Earth. Um, <coughs> for what regards now, we are on the Earth with the, the, the feet on the surface. Hydrology is the study of continental fluxes of water, even if we are going beyond that, more or less, in, yeah. that's the, the tendency. So we are a, 
in a point here. When we are in a point, we will see, and we talked before about the sky view angle factors, but obviously we have also the surrounding hitting us. If we are in the <coughs> in, inside two walls during summer, during the summer of south of Italy or uh, in Sardinia, which is not south but is uh, center more or less, but it's still um, more hot than here. During summer, you uh, during night you you know the, 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 you you have to open the window to create to create some water movement because otherwise uh, you if you close the windows uh, you know that uh, you are going to be cooked because uh, because the walls are are uh, at a certain temperature and they accumulate uh, solar radiation during the day they are emitting uh, radiation during the night so they are keeping uh, keeping hot the room the same is for a, a, a place here where we have mountains, uh, if the solar radiation hit the mountains and uh, you you go close to the mountain actually, uh, you are not in the middle of the valley where there is some wind creating, moving moving out, you, you really feel the radiation coming out from, uh, from the wall. So we have also here, just to say that also the surrounding is counting for, on the total budget of radiation in a point and how we do we account for it. Uh, first, to, to tell you that, uh, you know, that our equation for long wave radiation is this one, is the, uh, the uh, Planck, uh, the Stefan Boltzmann radiation. You, are, you have uh, the incoming, first we have the long wave incoming from the mm, to estimate the long, long wave coming from the atmosphere, which, which has these this things, and this is, uh, uh, you know, but, but this is easy because we have I, and part of the I is at sky, part of the I is terrain, so we have at least two terms that we have to account when we estimate the, the, the incoming solar radiation. So the total story of the solar radiation is we have the long wave radiation coming from the sky. <coughs> this is mostly you, uh, uh, more, or more or less proportional to the visual angle we have to the sky. Then we have the solar radiation coming from the surrounding. Solar radiation coming from the surrounding actually is a little from a, at least a conceptual point of view is a complex thing because uh, if, if, you, if you go out on the terrace here and you look around, you saw we have surroundings which are completely under the, uh, under the direct solar radiation and they are uh, warmer than those other, those other uh, mountains that are in shadow now. now. So surrounding means different things, some averaging that we have to do uh, on the surrounding. There are some PhD thesis around, uh, one by Helbig, I think I mentioned it somewhere in, in this thing, that where uh, all this scattering and, and reflecting uh, from the surface was taken into account. Uh, but the overall effect is, uh, it seems not to uh, to pay off for the efforts because it, it becomes very complicated to calculate all the reflections in, in around the surrounding. So here what I put was a sort of, of average temperature of the surrounding that uh, fed back us with, uh, with solar radiation with obviously uh, uh, calculating a mean temperature in this, in this way is not exact because we, not, uh, we, d we know that uh, first Temperature is not additive. Secondly, we have a four power there that uh, makes nonlinear the equation. So this part has some meaning, but uh, not uh, fuzzy at this at this moment. 
Finally, we also have the, the, this part that we are, we are taking into account, which is how much is we are emitting, how much we are cooling, <coughs> because that, uh, that's uh, essentially the, the, okay, here probably not L, L down, L down is just the first two terms, and we are the third term, which is makes the, the <coughs> Long way budget should be okay. Ln down probably mm -hmm. the better definition for the next. So we we go very empirical on that side, but uh, we will use this information. Also, also the other thing is that uh, what is actually temperature, which temperature we have available. In principle, it's easy to estimate uh, how much is lo lo long wave is emitting this thing here, part of this yellow in the visible part, because of we take a thermometer, we measure the temperature, we know how it is emitting in the, in, in the long wave part. But uh, uh, we don't know that information for any place of, the, of this, our landscape, at least we deduce from uh, from remote sensing, but here there is a, let's say, a loop in a sense, because uh, we are using the, uh, uh, the, the Stefan Boltzmann law for, the, for deducing the temperature of the radiation. We detect radiation, not temperature. So the temperature that remote sensing measure is not exactly the same how we measure with the, uh, with the thermometer, and that we have taken sometimes care of it takes care or scares of it <laughs> sometimes. sometimes. Uh, the real process from the, uh, from the uh, atmosphere is a function, is a complicated function. So, uh, from the temperature of the atmosphere, different levels, uh, the contents of water, the contents of uh, CO2, the contents of methano, methane. Uh, the hydrological parameterization we use is uh, in a way uh, resemble the, uh, the, mm, the Boltzmann law, <coughs> where all the unknown, uh, say, temperature, the temperature measure at two meters, like here, from a meteor station close to the surface, uh, we assume that the Boltzmann law is uh, valid, and we change, make the emissivity a function, a function of several other things that uh, we are more or less deducing. It is called global emissivity of the atmosphere. Actually, uh, between the global in the global emissivity of the atmosphere, we have two components. One is uh, uh, the emissivity at, at clear sky, meaning assuming that there are no clouds. And the other is the emissivity assuming that there are clouds. Clouds are uh, sometimes cold, but they emit in the long way radiation. And this effect is really, really visible in what uh, in in what we measure, uh, both from the meteorological point of view and the hydrological point of view. If we have, for instance, a, a snow cover, snow is a, is a strange material because uh, it, it has several, uh, several mechanisms uh, uh, with which it is not uh, evaporating or sublimating. Because it's white, so most of the radiation eating the snow is going back because uh, when it is uh, sublimating it is maintaining a, a constant temperature so, so uh, a, a thermal inversion develops above the, the, the snow which depress any, any, any flux and, uh, uh, and also I don't remember now what I was telling <laughs> anymore, but <laughs> yeah, the snow is, uh, uh, um, uh, and also uh, the third thing is uh, uh, 
uh, what is radiating back depends uh, also on the effects of on the sky and as snow is radiating back on the long wave if you have clear sky is a uh, uh, is uh, decreasing its temperature a lot during the night uh, a lot is not so quantitative like, uh, <coughs> like uh, in, in a statement but uh, instead if you have a clouds over clouds uh, radiates back a long wave radiation and shows snow is not accumulating uh, coldness let's say so uh, the, the fact that there are clouds is really important from some processes in, uh, in, in a <coughs> especially the part uh, connected to the cryosphere. But uh, what, so we are taking into account the cloud cover through a simple formula like this one, which is uh, one plus A, C, B, uh, elevated to B, where uh, C is the cloud cover fraction, the mean, the, <coughs> the fraction of the sky which is covered by clouds and C and B are two parameters that are usually calibrated you can imagine that you we can do a lot much more a best much more be better thing on, on this topic but that's the way we have uh, we treat in, in our model uh, the, uh, in literature and here there are cited some paper there are values from A and B, typical values from A and B, but all of it should be, if you really do this kind of measurements, or re uh, this is really crucial for you, I insist that you calibrate your parameters back for your cases. You can, you can rely on literature parameters to have a decent idea of what is going on, but not a precise idea of what is going on. So <coughs> the main point is how is done this all clear, clear sky emissivity. During the years, various people proposed parametric forms so for estimating uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, epsilon clear, depending on uh, at the most of three parameters, x, y, and z. You see here you have several formulas, each one of them has uh, one uh, uh, justification. Some of them depends on te the temperature of air at two meters, and where T appear, we don't need to learn them and rem uh, remi uh, remind them all over. They are all written in the code that you will use. And uh, we have also some uh, parameter table here, which is the one that comes out from literature. Uh, historically, uh, the, those parameterization were made in different places. Uh, and uh, you know, most of them were though in the northern hemisphere and in some particular conditions. So if you use them, please. Uh, pay attention to the uh, to the where the me measurements were done for the parameters and uh, uh, actually we found in uh, in our paper that the IPSO model works mm, this decently well everywhere where we tested and we tested again uh, Fluxnet uh, uh, measurement station in the United States 25 measurements So uh, to go to the end, uh, we have a long wave model for uh, calculating the, long wave, the, the emission of long wave models and for the incoming long wave model. And we have, uh, uh, we have uh, a uh, parameterized form for them with parameters. We also provided actually uh, some uh, uh, linear regression with some uh, explaining factors so of this parameters that quite improve the, the original simulate the original um, uh, the, the original use of this but uh, the message is uh, you need the site specific parameters if you use one of them uh, maybe 
maybe uh, this is less important for the ITSO model, which is number six here, which is the x plus y times uh, an exponential of, of the temperature of, of the soil. Finally, we can consider it the also sum of the radiation, long wave radiation, short wave radiation, we have the budget radiation, the uh, kind of uh, here we, we write like this one, but we have the Rn is the total uh, radiation, alpha is the albedo of the surface, F, uh, down, uh, down arrow, short wave is the uh, total incoming short, short, short wave radiation, where we take away all the absorption from, uh, from the atmosphere. L down is the long wave radiation that we get uh, that we gave, uh, uh, we gave before. And uh, uh, obviously, uh, we have the radiation up. We have that is uh, uh, alpha R up, which is the radiated back, the arrows in the wrong direction. I realize right now. And uh, finally, you have the long wave up, which is given by the temperature of the point where you are. So, uh, this is sometimes, uh, you know, uh, it took a couple of hours to go uh, to do a brief um, overview of uh, on what we do on radiation, in particular, what. Generally, hydrology is nothing especially different for what uh, hydrology do. But this is a quite, uh, is indeed quite a sophisticated thing. It's because sometimes they say, I, oh, for estimating a bubble transpiration, we will see tomorrow we use, uh, we use uh, uh, the radiation. But here, what, which radiation are you using? Radiation. <coughs> The net radiation, the long short wave coming short wave radiation as a proxy of, of the net radiation. Uh, are you using uh, the radiation hourly, daily? Are you using radiation uh, taking into account uh, the, uh, the effect of, of topography or not? So this is very seldom specified in hydrological papers. I can tell you that the, the according to the type of radiation you use to force your model, the energy budget can be uh, completely different. Evapotranspiration can be quite different. And the snow evolution can be quite different. Um, because the focus of uh, the uh, hydrologist, at least from engineer, for years was on, on um, giving the, the discharges the, those, these topics were not at the center of the, of the attention. But now if you want to constrain, for instance, the budget to the mass budget, you say, okay, I have precipitation. Uh, precipitation is given by uh, uh, precipitation minus uh, runoff minus evapotranspiration must be equal to the variation of the soil moisture. So preserve mass. If model hydrological model want to preserve mass, they also have to cope also with the radiation and all the complication that it, it brings inside. So I think I am done now for this, and what you will be able to do now you will see with uh, Michele in the, and uh, Nicolò also is there for helping you. Uh, how to estimate radiation in different ways. Then you will decide in your application uh, wi which, uh, which kind of degree you can uh, course grain the information on it.